What is your favorite animal? What video game has your favorite music? What looks better when it's wet? A plant. Summer sun hitting droplets on leaves. Spoken like a true poet. Definitely rocks. A spider web. The drops of dew highlight each strand like a row of glimmering beads. It's beautiful. Grapes. The Mississippi River. Sad upvote. We need more water in that thing. Those pills that turn into dinosaur-shaped sponges when you add water to them. I miss those things. Dreams. Bro? You can't see because, you know, it's just a, it's just a, I'm just a voice. But I'm doing the rock eyebrow with the vine boom. You know. <laughs> what do you think is the number one Christmas movie of all time? The Year Without a Santa Claus. I've always been a sucker for claymation. Yeah, and the songs in that one are so good, like Blue Christmas and the Snow Miser Heat Miser songs. Oh my god, I could sing those ones all day long. Everyone has already said the usual suspects, so I wanted to give a nod to a more recent, maybe less known one. Klaus! It's on Netflix, and it about makes me cry every time. Love that one. It is a really good one, so if you have Netflix and you haven't seen Klaus, maybe watch it this year. It's damn near 100 years old, but It's a Wonderful Life still does it for me. The Muppets Christmas Carol, Home Alone, Charlie Brown Christmas, or It's a Wonderful Life. Scrooged. It's a personal favorite. What's the dumbest reason someone broke up with you? Because her friends broke up with their boyfriends. Ah, yes. We love peer pressure. We love being with the crowd. Yes, sir. I visited my dad while he was in the hospital with cancer. She broke up with me because I was visiting my dying dad instead of visiting her. I feel like I dodged a major bullet. You dodged the whole gun. <laughs> you dodged the whole gun, the whole, the whole thing. No joke. Joke, her mood ring changed colors. No shot. Is that real? <laughs> oh, goodness. Car was too old. Dropped her. Car is still chugging along. You've been really sad ever since I cheated on you, and I don't like that, so bye. She broke up with you because you were upset she cheated on you. Oh, man. That's tough, buddy. My first boyfriend came over and dumped me on my front porch. He said he didn't like my lisp. He also had a lisp. Edit. Some of you are so insensitive. Was convinced I was cheating on them with my gay cousin. Whoa, my God. That was from outfield. What is a non-negotiable rule in your house for everyone? Don't tap on the aquarium glass. Clean up after yourself. If there is a cat on your lap, you don't have to get up for any reason. If there is food in the house, it is available to anyone, company included. One of the biggest rules is actually for when people are leaving my home. It's a very simple one. Text me when you get home safely. That's wholesome. And once I own a house, that'll be my number one rule. If I ever have people over, I have, I don't have very many friends. <laughs> Hit the fan before you <laughs> We argue about pizza toppings all the time, but what burger crimes have you witnessed? Burgers that are too tall. I don't want to dislocate my jaw eating that thing. Make burgers wide, not tall. Having toppings that make the bun soggy or just fall off when you try to take a bite out of it. There's an easy solution to this one. Toast your buns. Toast your buns. Cheeseburger, but with sweet blueberries inside the patties. Am I a gross, disgusting son of a B word? If I say that this sounds not bad and I would probably try it. I really like fruit. I really like blueberries. They're really good. A girl at my work put shrimp and broccoli on a Big Mac before. Gross. <laughs> Nasty. Putting shrimp on a Big Mac? Broccoli, I mean, it just kind of like cancels out the un unhealthy bits, right? Right? I live in Japan. 99% of the burgers are a crime. You never know when you'll get a crunchy patty because the gristles get ground up too. Ew. Uh, no. No. Soggy lettuce. If the lettuce ain't crisp, you must acquit. I don't think that catchphrase is going to stick around, buddy. Maybe uh, try something else. Those stupid food prawn burgers where they pour melted cheese all over the bloody thing. Look, it's a cheeseburger, not a burger cheese. I would like some cheese with my burger, but I don't want the whole plate filled up with it and I can't even see my freaking burger. Witnessed a freaking war crime in front of my very eyes. Banana slices in a cheeseburger. Now, I know I just said fruit on a burger doesn't sound that bad. This sounds awful. <laughs> what natural thing seems fake? Katatumbo lightning, also known as the beacon of America. Kaibo, or the Everlasting Storm, is seasonal lightning around Lake Maracaibo in northern Venezuela. The region endures more than 160 storm nights a year, nine hours per day, and with lightning flashes from 16 to 40 times per minute. That just sounds like there's a legendary Pokemon at that lake. Might want to go check it out. Bring your Master Ball. Caterpillar Metamorphosis. Their bodies break down inside the chrysalis and reconstruct into something new. Geodes. You open up a plain looking rock and there's suddenly a bunch of bright colorful stuff in there? No way, man. The different shapes that show up when you place sand 
hand over a speaker and see the sound wave patterns. Water that's so calm it looks like glass. Peacock tails. So intricate, like someone crocheted it, and the colors are mythical. We fantasize about unicorns, and I'm over here yelling, but we have peacocks. The northern lights. Aurora borealis. Snowflakes. When you look at them up close, the details and individual design of each one is insane. The way cashews grow. A lot of Australia's natural fauna. Asparagus grows like someone is trying to trick you into thinking that's how it grows. Literally just looks like you bought some at the store and stuck it in the dirt. I worked one summer on a pot farm that used to be an asparagus field, and remember, I'm just being absolutely baffled. I had a bonsai tree I watered for a year before realizing it was fake. I'm still confused by where all the water went. The Grand Canyon. When you see it with your own eyes, it totally looks like a film backdrop. Photos don't do it justice. What's the worst Christmas gift you've received that you had to pretend you like? A set of miniature butter knives with ceramic fruit and vegetables as the handles. From an aunt who said that I was so hard to shop for. I was seven. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that seems like it would be a nice quaint gift for your third cousin once removed that you've met twice and you know that they like, I don't know, exotic cheese. But yeah, sure, whatever. A Lamborghini calendar. My brother got a guitar and an amp. My two sisters got a bike each. Fork, I hate Lamborghinis now. When I was in grade school, I liked to wear my fingernails long, but my mom hated it. Every single year for Christmas, she would give me nail clippers. And every single year, my sister would give me a diary because the first year they did it, I was stupid enough to use it, but then my whole family turned out to be reading it. So every year after that, I opened my new diary and thanked her, but never touched it again. Eons ago, I worked for a company owned by the richest man in Minnesota. One year, all of us peons, and there were a couple thousand of us, got a copy of his book. It was all about how he became the richest man in Minnesota. Cheap bastard. Yeah, I probably would have put in my two weeks on the spot there. Whew. Talk about, like, rude and pretentious. Titanic DVD. Pirated copy. Already seen it before twice. It didn't have a case. Just had Titanic written in marker pen. It didn't belong to the person who gifted it. The DVD was scratched and didn't even play. But it's the thought that counts, right? A dish towel. I was eight years old. Yeah, it was a sign to go clean up Christmas dinner after we're done with it. You, you little child. Go do your chores. No allowance. When my brother was about four years old, someone gifted him a Backstreet Boys CD, and when he opened it, he said, oh, no thank you, while shaking his head. Lol, so polite. Reminds me of that vine. An avocado. Thanks. I have a three-year-old student who is a very serious kid. He comes two days a week and has never been thrilled with school. He had a great day last week, and I asked him if he had fun. In a very happy tone, he said, yeah, I did. Abrupt switch to serious face. But now it's time for me to go home. I'm done. I'll come back and see you on Tuesday. My dad bought his girlfriend boobs for Christmas and got my brother a MacBook. I got a doll that I already had. What's the most fork you present you can give someone for Christmas? A blockbuster gift card, if you can ever get your hands on one of them. My mom once gave me an inflatable dartboard. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Regifting a gift basket, but it's obvious that you took out some items that you liked. Regift them what they gave you last year. I don't think I can hang on to one thing for an entire year with the intention of being petty. I'd probably throw it away by then. Rose Art's craft supplies. What's wrong with Rose Art? Rose Art was good. I mean, it wasn't Crayola. It wasn't, you know, the, the, the number one stuff, but Rose Arts is good. It's not bad. I gave my four-year-old niece a 30-pack of colored glitter glue. The fork you was to my husband's sister-in-law. Make a donation in their name to a charity, cause, or organization that is in opposition to their beliefs. Then give them the thank you email receipt from the donation in a Christmas card, or better yet, wrap it up in a big box. Address deliberately two sizes too small, and then when unwrapping it on Christmas, they tell you, it's for motivation. Fork you, Judy. A $5 Starbucks gift card. Very few drinks on the menu are less than $5. They'll most certainly have to pay the difference on the first and only use. A book of how to overcome gambling addiction in front of the whole family. Want to place bets on how quick I finish reading this? If they are a parent, gift their kids something that makes noise. What is a clear sign a movie sucks? If it's past 2005 and it has Adam Sandler in it. <laughs> Sequel without the original cast. Edit. Thanks for all the upvotes, everyone. I've never had a post take off like this before. When it's so dark, you can't see anything. Frank Capra had a great quote for my answer. There are no rules in filmmaking, only sins, and the cardinal sin is dullness. From the twisted minds that brought you. You start making fun of the character's logic not even 10 minutes into the film. Straight to v <laughs> VHS in 2022. When its leading production names, e.g. director, have only made bad films. Or when the director is Alan Smithy or Tommy Wiseau. Generic pop songs for the soundtrack. Yeah, like trolls. Movies that tell and don't show. When the trailer has a slow, melancholy version of a popular, upbeat song. So we're just talking about, like, Lord's rendition of Everybody Wants to Rule the World from The Hunger Games, right? That's the first one that came to mind, and the boy, I tell ya, that version sucks. And I 
I, I don't li I don't hate Lord. I like Lord, but oh my Lord, that song is bad. Tears for Fears did it right. If James Corden plays an animal, it's on the avoid list for me. Scratch that, James Corden in general. That's what I be saying. We need to eradicate James Corden from Hollywood because everything he touches, it's like the Midas touch, except instead of gold, it's shit. <laughs> the movie's poster says the kissing booth. Fair enough. So hikers of Reddit, what is the strangest thing you've seen on the trails? Not my story, but my dad's actually. I was probably around eight or nine and was around the corner while my dad and his friend were ahead of us. They were having a conversation about trees falling in the woods and if they make a sound. My dad says if a tree falls in the woods and a huge oak fell right in front of them, blocking the rest of the trail. Myself and the other kid ran to see what happened around the bend because we heard the crash and my dad and his friend looked like they had just seen a ghost. Whoa. In a swamp in Florida, I found a picture of a high school age girl, looked like a graduation picture, stabbed into the ground by a kitchen knife and surrounded by black candles. Also had an old naked barefoot hippie lady come jogging up on a mountain past me on the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina. Great. <laughs> I mean, sure. Awesome, dude. A man resembling Santa wearing nothing but granny panties. That's what he does in the off season. I was out for a run on a trail and heard this awful animalistic groaning sound. Like any idiot in a horror movie, I kept going to see what it was. I rounded the bend, and there next to an idyllic stream were two massive alligator snapping turtles engaging in coitus. The one mounting the other, one actually made eye contact with me while he kept humping. 20 years later, and I'm still traumatized. A horse having its bum licked by a goat that was on a rock. Like as if it was standing on a like a box to reach the horse better. It's always weird seeing clothing, but even weirder, I've seen strollers and hiking trails. Usually the easier ones, of course, but like, why did the person think they could bring a stroller on a trail and why did they abandon it? I've seen it multiple times. Some people just don't think very well. Two guys digging a hole at 2 a.m. It was weird. They noticed us and called us over, but we just took off running. They just wanted to show you that they were not digging a shallow grave. What's your controversial music opinion? Some people might not be the best musicians, but they put so much emotion into the music that for me, it's as good or even better than a perfectly performed song. It sucks when people overdo the Star Spangled Banner. Come on, just leave it alone. I just think we shouldn't be singing the Star Spangled Banner as much anyway. A national anthem is not the place to show off. Sing it with heart, but I don't want to hear your Mariah Carey impression. Simply put, Jack Black's rendition is the single best version ever sung. Clean, powerful, and simple. Flashbacks to Fergie's performance of the U.S. National Anthem. Most of you who can't find good modern music are just really bad at looking for it. This holds true for every genre. The Killers are secretly a Christian rock band. Britney Spears' hit songs depicted her struggles. Hit me, baby. Toxic. I'm a slave. Damn, you're right. Just because something is catchy doesn't mean it's good. Adam Levine's falsetto is a strain on my poor ears. OP wanted controversial music opinions. At this point, the controversial opinion is liking anything about Adam Levine. Hey, guys, come on. O old Maroon 5 is good. Old Maroon 5. Not new Maroon 5, and definitely not new Adam Levine. <laughs> Complex music is not necessarily better music. One chord is fine. Two chords are pushing it. Three chords, and you're into jazz. Lou Reed. Let me write a 10 chord intro to a three chord song. Also, Lou Reed. People who play their music in a shared dorm or public space without headphones have the shittiest taste in music. People have read it. What was your man? How did I not do this sooner moment? Pretty generic answer, but regularly working out. Been at it for about three months now. I'm seeing some great muscle definition. I have stretch marks on my arms, chest, and legs. I have more energy in my day to day life. I'm eating better as a result. My sleep is generally more restful. My mental health is on the upswing. Too many benefits to not keep at it. Getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Yeah, in my dreams. DD. &D. I should have played it sooner. It's absolutely chaotically amazing. Getting a credit card to pay off a credit card. It sounded crazy, but I could pretty much only afford to pay the fees. <coughs> then someone suggested an interest free credit card with the free balance transfer. All of a sudden, all I was paying was reducing the debt. Stopped arguing with random strangers on the internet. Source? No, you didn't. <laughs> Deleting my Facebook account. Not even kidding. It was a tremendous improvement to my quality of life. I did this this year, and uh, I love it. Not having a Facebook and not seeing what any of my like relatives or people that I knew from high school post? It's awesome. What childish thing do you still do and don't plan on ever stopping? Sliding on hardwood floors in your socks. During autumn, I go out of my way to shuffle through piles of leaves when I'm walking. Throwing stones into the water? It's very satisfying. Avoiding stepping on sidewalk lines and cracks. Riding a shopping cart across the parking lot? Always satisfying. Hug my stuffed animal. Swing on swing sets. LOL. Who is this generation's greatest artist? Define this generation. Define artist. Define define. Define <laughs> This thread is a dumpster fire. The question was gasoline. Dylan. Which one? I can only think of two off the top of my head and one's not even a singer. And the other one's not part of this 
generation, I thought of Bob Dylan and Dylan Sprouse from, from Zack and Cody and nothing else. For the current generation, there's a guy on TikTok with a duck. That is kind of funny. That's about it. Tommy Wiseau. No. <laughs> the two or three companies that write and produce all the top 40 music these days. Danny DeVito. Donald Glover. Music, acting, and comedy. I don't know. I feel like Glover stole a lot of his best stuff from Childish Gambino. Glover and Gambino can't hold the torch to the guy that played Troy from Community. Harambe. Guys, it's been six years. Let go of the freaking gorilla. The jokes aren't funny anymore. Sacha Baron Cohen. Mia Khalifa. I don't know who that is. Who had the biggest fall from grace in history? By the time I was a child, Bill Cosby was so universally recognized as an icon of wholesome comedy that one of the most popular kid shows of my youth was literally just a cartoon about his childhood. Now the legacy of that little cartoon show is tainted by the very subject of the show itself. That's a fall from grace. From being trusted to be a part of your kid's formative years to becoming one of the most vile and disliked men of all time. I'm sure there are worse people, but Harvey Weinstein went from being one of the most powerful people in the world to being completely reviled and losing everything. This is the guy who had Meryl Streep and Oprah on speed dial and married to a woman a thousand times too attractive for him. He now uses a walker and has lost his fortune and his reputation. And his wiener is literally rotting off! In case you didn't know, several of the women who accused him of sexual misconduct all pointed out that he wasn't really interested in sex per se, but just wanted massages. According to some, his hygiene was so poor, he developed an infection on his wiener, which then rotted the flesh after being left untreated. He basically got gangrene on his genitals and was effectively impotent. Jeffrey Jones, aka the dad from Beetlejuice, aka the principal from Ferris Bueller. OJ has to be up there. Jim Jones. He originally stood up for civil rights and then he became a cult leader. From a civil rights leader to cult murderer who was responsible for more than 900 deaths. Roses are red, violets are glorious, don't try to surprise Oscar Pistorius. What job seems to attract a-holes? General attorney here. The answer is general attorney. Loan sharking. It's a job that requires you to be an a-hole. Whoever is supposed to moderate the moderators on Reddit. Boat salesman. Scum of the earth, if you ask me. Uh, morning radio show host. You will never meet a person you'll hate more than a club promoter. It's everything left over from the dregs of douchebag guys that think they are the coolest and spend their 40s buying drinks for their 20-something friends. Military. I'm a retired Air Force vet. 26 years and I saw plenty of a-holes. Retired as fork. Management positions in department stores. Give a weak human a minuscule amount of authority and they act like a wannabe dictator and powerful figure. What's your toxic trait that you're proud of? I can make up my mind that I don't care about someone anymore and immediately just stop caring. No build-up, no debate, no worrying about if I made the right call. Kinda scary because sometimes I start to contemplate doing it with everyone and well, I know that's not a good idea. I know someone who is like that. I can disassociate and ignore bad stuff. It's like turning on an IDGAF switch. Not really proud of it, but it's useful. Live fast, eat trash. Are you a raccoon? I pick apart and analyze to death everything, person, idea, sentence, whatever. My brain only does rabbit hole deep dives, and this is honestly more satisfying than organized thought for me. I clean when mad. The more mad, the more cleaning. I wish I was like that. I really wish I was. I would get so much done. I can function with a criminally low amount of sleep. It's not healthy, but it adds hours to me being able to get things done. It's really helped me career-wise over the years. I draw Homer Simpson's head on pretty much everything. It only takes a few seconds for me to draw a Homer. OP should do writing prompts. Just came here to say this is one of the better questions I've seen on this sub. Agreed. Awesome thread. I obsess over things and it leads to a lot of social anxiety and difficult focusing in most social situations. It's also, however, led me to finding some deeply meaningful skills and hobbies. Hey, good for you, man. What are your thoughts on Twitter shutting down? Guys, Twitter can't shut down. That's where I have the most followers. By the way, follow my Twitter, says Mason Live. Uh, if it does shut down, uh, shoot, I don't really know. Uh, I guess Instagram, <laughs> says Mason. Watching the meltdown and reading increasingly absurd headlines every day was quite entertaining, TBH. 75% of the employees left accepted the three-month severance. That means around 12% of the employees there on Musk's first day remain. Those still there probably have a good reason, like visa, health insurance, etc. Wow! Seems impossible that this wasn't inevitable. People will just have to do something else while shorting on the toilet. I didn't know it was shutting down. Yeah, you've been on Reddit too much. Oh no! Anyways, Elon should buy TikTok next. He can be the Grim Reaper of bad social media. No, guys, TikTok is good. You know why? Because Ask MK is on TikTok. You can follow us on TikTok at Ask MK. What fetish is a nope for you? I'd do anything for love, but I won't do scat. Don't know what it's called, but when a dominatrix in heels stomps on your scrotum. Ah! I can't. Ah, God, I don't. I'm gonna throw up. Despite my username, feces. Divorce. I had a few wives that are really into it. <laughs> Sad. Anything I do to a toilet, I won't do to another person or allow another person to do to me. 
Not into dead goldfish, huh? You do you. When they ask you to cover yourself in dirt and wiggle around on the floor in your underwear. I don't know what it's called, but it's happened three separate times now, and I just don't get the appeal. Literally everything already in this thread. If there was a vote for one person to receive immortality, who would win? Really comes down to who would want to live with Keith Richards. <laughs> most likely the most undeserving asshole possible. My old boss, Hamish. So he can watch humanity go extinct and have a miserable eternity. That dude in India with the feeding program feeding two million kids a day or something. I would vote for my worst enemy as a punishment. You won't be able to rest and will see all the people you love die. One after the other. Even your own children. And the children of your children. In a non-stop everlasting nightmare. That one guy's dead wife. <laughs> oh no. I, I, I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Surely, Sir David Attenborough deserves it at this point, right? Uh, no. I don't think David Attenborough deserves that pain. I think we should give it to Keith Richards. I want to see how much older he can look. Which celebrity is considered beautiful, but you just can't see it? A character on some show or game that said the secret of celebrities is they're all actually strange looking or oddly ugly in some special way. I've always remembered that. Drake. I know several women who think he's absolutely gorgeous. Purely on looks, he seems completely unremarkable to me. Drake. Like, why? In what dimension or planet? That one guy who was married to J-Lo. Mark Anthony. Megan Fox's boyfriend. What's his name? MGK looks like a tall 1800s starving newspaper boy. <laughs> Chris Brown. Even before the Rihanna thing, I never understood why people had the hots for him. After Rihanna, even uglier. Adam Levine. He looks like a thumb with glued on ears and glued on patchy face hair that someone else shaved off first. Am I the only one who just doesn't see all the ooing and eyeing over Jared Leto? He looks like he doesn't bathe and there are all the stories of his method acting. Leonardo DiCaprio was so cute and then rapidly aged in the Jack Nicholson. Chrissy Teigen, she's a supermodel? Kylie Jenner. B-word is about to look like Donatella Versace in about 10 more years. Watch. Who's the character everyone loves but is actually annoying? Tweety Bird from Looney Tunes. So much self-conscious cuteness plus he stirs up stuff just to play the victim. The real world has enough manipulative characters. I don't need one in my cartoons. So I just asked my wife this question and she immediately said Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. I absolutely had to ask why that was and she said when she was a child she loved Big Bird and she always wanted to be Big Bird's best friend. But she felt like Snuffleupagus was always in the way because on the show Big Bird would always say Snuffy was his best friend. She even told me that till this day she had a minor hatred for woolly mammoths because they reminded her of Snuffleupagus. Learn something new in marriage every day. Serena from Gossip Girl. This girl has no self-control. She's always hooking up with someone, even if they're married. Nate's cousin and Nate himself, like he was just like her for cheating on Blair. She has the style and the look for the stand factor, and that's it. Frosty the Snowman. I can't explain, but that mother father gets on my nerves big time. I forkin' hate Piper in Orange is the New Black. To be honest, the whole show was a stuff show, and I don't know why it was such a zeitgeist when it was coming out. Raymond. <laughs> nice. Peppa Pig. At the end of the day, she's a spoiled brat. Bro fat shames her dad. What's your favorite anime series? Old Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. King of the Hill. He's got the right spirit. Mine is the Big O. Ugh, I miss the Big O. Dragon Ball Z. Death Note. 10 out of 10 anime. Mob Psycho 100 is such an uplifting gem of a show. Psychopaths. When I want to chill, Natsume Yujinko. I hope I got that right. One Punch Man Season 1. Why did nobody say JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? It's such a good anime. All of, all of the seasons, all of the parts, all so good. <clears throat> what would you do with your life if you no longer had to worry about money. Travel and help the needy. Find something else to worry about. Get my own house. That is the goal. What I wouldn't do for my own house. Not go to work. I would run a food blog. I want to farm aquarium snails. Basically the same as what I'm doing now, but without stressing every financial decision. What would be the best thing that could happen to you right now? Fall into an uncomplicated loving relationship. Unexpected $2 billion debited right to the bank account to be used by me only. Winning the lottery. Getting some free time. Free cheeseburger. Unconditional sudden self-love. Same. Just to feel a general feeling of happiness for a whole day. A whole day? Brother, you're asking for a little too much. What's the thing that you miss the most from your childhood? Free time and a lack of responsibility. The joy of everything. Family gatherings. My grandparents are all dead. My cousins, etc. are all grown up and married with their own families. We don't do large gatherings anymore with the kids table and stuff. I hated them growing up and now that I'm older, I miss them. Summer vacation! My innocence. No cell phones or social media. 8-bit video games. Transformers and play and hide and seek using the entire neighborhood as the zone. I don't really miss anything. I'm honestly pretty glad my childhood is dead and gone. Childhood sucks. I don't really relate to all the nostalgia other people have. The feeling of being taken care of and being acknowledged without having to put in so much effort. What motto do you live by? Do not be sorry, be better. Eh, fork it. Maximum effect with minimum of effort. Everything goes better with a smile. Don't fall in love 
love with potential. Take it a minute at a time. The past can't be changed, but what you do in this minute can change your future. Fake it till you make it. If things don't go the way that they should, then it should go the way that they do. So accept things you can't control. It reduces a lot of stress. For shits and giggles. What is a fashion trend you absolutely hate? Wearing pajamas is regular clothes. Takes me off guard. Nah, brother, that stuff's good. I love wearing my PJs out in the grocery store. It's fun. I have ones that have little moose on them. And then I also have one with dog bones and cute doggy faces and paw prints. Fake pockets. Torn and ripped jeans. Seriously, they've been around way too long. Fast fashion generates a mind-boggling amount of waste. Mullets. Trends. They're for the anxious and insecure. Puffy sleeve dress worn with sneakers or trainers. All of them. We should all dress up like rocks. Crocs. There's so many more other attractive and comfy shoes. Don't care. I like Crocs. Skinny jeans. Low-rise pants. What is one TV intro that you'll never skip? Scooby-Doo. Especially what's new Scooby-Doo. You know, late 90s, early 2000s. I think that's when it was around. Early 2000s for sure. But here in What's New Scooby-Doo was Pog all the time. It was great. Psych. Mash and Adventure Time. Has to be Game of Thrones. The intro actually helps put each individual episode in context. Parks and Rec. Better call Saul. It's already short enough. Long drawn out intros don't really add much to shows. That's like the worst answer of all time. I just, I don't want to watch the intro of the guy's head going, It's not good. Next, Futurama. Especially since the intro is so short and contains different gags. Bob's Burgers. The Golden Girls. Twin Peaks. Malcolm in the Middle. What cheers you up instantly? Eating shredded cheese at 3 a.m. It really helps. Especially mozzarella cheese. Dogs. I have to agree here, sometimes I'll pause my recording mid-session and just go over to my bed and cuddle with my dog for like five minutes and then come back. Someone's blushing when they see me. Every time my husband smiles at me, my lifespan goes up by three years. <laughs> Bear boobs, especially. Bear boobs. My cat, because he's very fluffy, fat, cute, kind of stupid, orange, has a nice meow, and finally, his name is Barzini, just like the one in The Godfather. Also, my dog, because she's always happy to see me and loves me a lot, and I love her. She's kind of stupid, too, and due to the thin fur she wears, thick clothes in this time of year and looks ridiculous. The blood of my enemies. Looking at greeting cards and looking at holiday decorations up and down the aisle of stores. Mario Kart Wii music. Well, it is the best Mario Kart. Better than Double Dash, for sure. Bed music. You wake up early in the 1800s in London. What is the first thing that you do? Find some clothes, because if I learned one thing from Terminator, it's that time travel doesn't like clothes too much. Die of the common cold. Buy a house. Open the window and say to the person below, you there, what day is today? Go see an execution. Grim, I know, but archaic forms of punishment, execution, and torture fascinate me. I'm traveling to Bath to track down Jane Austen. Move to a big mansion with a sexy gamekeeper. Go back to sleep. Scream because I'm about to be purchased. What's a movie that never fails to make you cry. The Green Mile. OMG, I ball at this movie. Marley and Me. A Dog's Purpose. I was crying and sobbing like an MF when I watched it back and then, well, it always makes me cry. We humans don't deserve dogs. Forrest Gump. Every single time. Up. Mainly the beginning. Interstellar. And Up. The It's Not Your Fault scene in Goodwill Hunting. Inside Out. Gets the old waterworks going every time. Take her to the moon for me, okay? Chicken Run. Oh man, that really brought me back. I remember that movie. The Fault in Our Stars. What movie has an Epic opening scene. Star Wars Episode 4. A New Hope. Casino Royale. Saving Private Ryan's D-Day scene. It's not the opening scene per se, but it's the start of the story and not a framing device. The Dark Knight. The Fellowship of the Ring. The Two Towers as well. The SpongeBob movie. This is actually the most correct answer so far. Children of Men. Mad Max Fury Road. The Hangover. You've been granted the ability to delete one word from the English language for a year. Which word do you remove and why? Oh boy, I can't wait to see what trending word this month people choose to get rid of. What? Oh, the word's gone. I get it. I get it. Four. <laughs> You bastard! I just think it would create a lot of chaos. Cringe. I will vote for this. Literally. <laughs> Kardashian. Like. There are people who would not be able to speak without it. Woke. I'm so sick of hearing my in-laws use it. Somersault. Never could do a good one. I can go a year without anyone challenging me to do one. Musk. Because it smells. Pronouns. That way, nobody can argue about using the wrong pronoun accidentally. Moist. What is this? 2012? Nobody cares about the word moist anymore. What are you thankful for? Day-to-day -day life with the people I care for the most. That I bought my house in 2019. You, my cat, and cats in general. That I have a roof over my head and food on the table.
table. Took that for granted before. Not having any debt. It's a global crisis and the internet is going down forever in 24 hours. What do you download? Wikipedia for obvious reasons and so much obscure filth as I can find. It'll have value. You're going to download all of Wikipedia? Okay. Gmod add-ons. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna take longer than 48 hours to download all that. All the cute anime mommies with big milkers. And visual novels. Okay. <laughs> freaking weirdo. Cat videos. My entire Steam library onto a new laptop. All of my financial data. ASMR videos. Flash games. I'm buying a new hard drive just to store it. You wake up June 15th, 1997. What do you do? Write a letter to Princess Diana emphasizing the importance of wearing a seatbelt. Go buy a PS1. It was just called a PlayStation. No one called it PlayStation 1 back then. Edit. Born 1985. But I'm from the future, so I know it's a PS1. He's got you good there. It's a Sunday. Next Saturday's UK National Lottery numbers are 1, 17, 20, 26, 27, 30, 44. Prize is just over 8.5 million pounds. So I buy a ticket. Then I tell Diana not to go to Paris with Dodie. Get ready for the first of many huge disappointments from the Minnesota Vikings next year. Party like it's 1999. Be confused as hell because I was born in 2001. Amazon stock, Apple stock, and in 2008, Bitcoin. Back out of my roommate situation with Bill. Move far away and never talk to him again. What the hell did Bill do? What's a word from your language? that you think the world should adopt. I guess it's translated as actuin, but it basically means death before death. I know it doesn't make much sense, but it's like a person who is born dead yet living. So like a zombie, but not a zombie. A man without purpose. See, I can do English. Kutsch. Like a cuddle or a hug, but more special. Skoden. It's a contraction of let's go then. Use like a more violent step above, hold my beer. If you're ever on a res and hear someone shout that, stuff's about to go down. Fork. Or has it already? Fork, yes. Fredadgismzies. Literally Friday cozy time. It's when the whole family get together on the living room couch with snacks, candy, and drinks, etc., and watch a movie together. Yeet. This BK Gaming underscore YT guy has some of the worst answers to these questions. I think I, I think I saw one of his other ones from an earlier post, and it was bad, too. What are you avoiding right now? Work, of course. Studying for finals. The cold air. Men. At all costs. All they do is ruin a young girl's life. No idea. I've avoided it so well, I've forgotten what I'm avoiding. What song do you want to be played at your funeral? Alive by by Pearl Jam. Ironic. Tub thumping. Dream On by Aerosmith. Just mess with people. Pop goes the weasel. Played slowly. Humped up kicks. Then all of my loved ones realize the doors are barricaded from the outside. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Seabat. Oh boy. While my guitar gently weeps. What famous person would have been great on social media if they were on it before their death? Mark Twain and Winston Churchill. Mozart. He was apparently pretty wild from what I understand. Dude would have been like Logan Paul and Andrew Tate, but he would also be a genius. Yeah, unlike Logan Paul or Andrew Tate. I imagine Michael Jackson would have been a hit. Or any famous rulers back in time, such as the kings and queens and our first presidents. I would love to see what George Washington would tweet. Oscar Wilde would have been a threat. Amy Winehouse. William Shakespeare would <laughs> people off daily. Charles Manson. Robin Williams. What? I mean, Robin Williams probably had social media before he died, right? Yeah, he died in 2014. Twitter was around way before that, buddy. Probably Da Vinci. What video game has your favorite music? Final Fantasy Fantasy 8, man. That forkin' song from Balam Garden? Gosh darn. Final Fantasy 9. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Fallout 3. Tekken 3. Grand Theft Auto. Which one? There's a lot of them. Persona 5 Royal. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And Life is Strange. Super Mario Sunshine. Pokemon. Yeah. Pokemon, sure, yeah. Uh, the thing like Gen 3 and 4 and 5 all had banger music. Gen 1 and 2, you know, it was before their time. Not the best. But Gen 3? Oh, the trumpets in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald. Woo! Loving it. Minecraft, Halo, and Mario. What is your favorite animal? A liger. Pretty much my favorite animal. Dogs. Dogs and cats. How about you, OP? Capybara, King Cobra, and Axolotl. Thanks for asking. Polar bears. They're so cute. Nothing is cuter than polar bear cubs. Unfortunately, they might not exist a couple decades from now. Rabbit. Username checks out. Hippopotamus. For sure. Koalas. Because of how chill they are. Username checks out. For sure. Elephants. Gentle giants and so majestic. Honey badger. Them be crazy. Also, I need a pet one. How can you instantly <laughs> someone off? It's actually pronounced Jif. Shut up. You're a wizard, Anakin. Gandalf, probably. What are we in? 2012? Oh my god. We've seen it all before. Honk your horn at a red light when you're in front of someone when they didn't even do anything and just keep doing it until the green light. That's just mean. Oh my god. I would be. I, that would work. I'd be pissed. Drive slowly and in the left lane. Deliberately fart in their face. Play that forking. Oh no, 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 no.
song song on my phone speaker. Tell them The Nightmare Before Christmas is a stupid, overrated movie. Ask them if Dumbledore <laughs> ever found the ring. <laughs> Look at your phone when they're talking. This is Reddit. Just post something. What is a sound associated with your current or previous job that you now hate? In a call center, the bing sound in your headset when you have an incoming call. Who still hears a ticket printer in their sleep? The incoming call sound and the Slack notifications. Oh my god. When my producer, Dave, sends me a Slack notification, I want to throw my phone across the god dang room. But then he just tells me that I'm doing a great job and that he appreciates me and I'm like, oh, thanks, Dave. I want to give you a big hug. Even if you are Australian. Vent high pressure alarms. Critical care nurse. Ding, fries are done. Ding, fries are done. The sound of a copier beeping. The Slack direct message notification sound. Christmas music from working in a mall. The sound of online takeout orders coming in constantly. My colleagues laugh. Alarm clock before I have to be there. The gas station sound when the door opens. But except at a boba store. Who are you getting really effing tired of hearing about? I don't know about person, but hearing the word influencer every 10 seconds has been taking its toll on me. You and me both, brother. I am so sick of hearing that word. It's oh, it's done. We're done with it. Let's, let's, let's use something else. My cat complaining about the state of her food bowl. It's full, cat. Leave me alone. I'm deaf, so nothing. Okay, well, what are you tired of reading about and or lip reading about and or seeing people sign about? My mom's best friend's daughter who should be my role model. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Everything I know about them is against my will. I feel like that about the Cartrashians. My best friend's ex. This is the first time I'm hearing about them and I'm already tired of it. Oh, get ready to hate them even more. There's this one time. Kanye West and Elon Musk. I too am sick of hearing them. I'm even more sick of Kanye's anti-Semitism. So if we could stop talking about both of them and just ignore them and maybe they'll stop being stupid and offensive and anti-Semitic. How I can cure my autoimmune diseases without medication using supplements. Ah, uh, yes. Natural cures like essential oils and sage and sticking a leaf blower up your nose. Yep, that, all that works for sure. Donald Trump, Elon Musk, Will Smith, and the royal family. Have we heard from Will Smith since he slapped Chris Rock? I don't think we have. <laughs> the rest of them? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sick of hearing about all of them. Trump, Kanye, Andrew Tate. The trifecta of annoying and bad people. Who is one celebrity that nobody hates? Maggie Smith. Alan Rickman. May he rest in peace. Bob Ross. Tony Hawk. I've never heard any bad <laughs> about him. Betty White. David Attenborough. He's a national treasure. That he is. Weird Al Yankovic. Danny DeVito. Hopefully. Hey, don't put that bad juju into the air. Danny DeVito's a treasure as far as I know. So, what is your family's deepest, darkest secret? My paternal grandfather had a girlfriend on the side. The entire time I knew him. When my grandmother died, he married her and completely disregarded us until right before he died. It was a life-changing lesson on how people you truly think you know have secrets. My DNA was connected to a cold case. I had no connection to the crime. A close relative did. That's gotta be an awkward Thanksgiving. Jesus Christ. Reading through all these truly disgusting stories and I'm over here thinking about my mom's no-bake cheesecake, which has been brought to every family gathering for 25 plus years and is adored by everyone, is just a recipe that she found on the back of a pre-made graham cracker crust. Yikes. Nestle Tool House has entered the chat. Well, get him out of here. We don't want you, Nestle. Our chili recipe. Oh, you're not gonna tell us? Come on, man. What song cover is so famous most people don't know it's a cover? The one that comes to mind is Tainted Love. I thought the soft cell version from 1982 was the original, but it was originally recorded by Motown artist Gloria Jones 17 years before. My brother told me that Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper is actually a cover. Looked it up. He's right. I had no idea. I will always love you. Which Dolly Parton wrote on the same day she wrote Jolene. That was a good day. Joan Jett's I Love Rock and Roll, originally by The Arrows. Annie Lennox, No More I Love You'd, originally by The Lover Speaks. Do you mean No More I Love You's? I, that could just be a typo. House of the Rising Sun. It was a folk song for nearly a century before the animals covered it. Theirs isn't a straight cover, since they completely changed the melody and added a sick organ solo. Respect was written by Otis Redding, but Aretha Franklin made it her own. Ditto Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower as performed by Jimi Hendrix. I was surprised when I found out how many Zeppelin songs are old blues covers. Black Magic Woman by Santana. It's a Peter Green song originally performed by Fleetwood Mac. Not so much a remake, but Carol King's A Natural Woman came on the radio back when my daughter was about 12. She thought it was interesting how Carol's version was just the piano and thought it was interesting how she made it so low-key compared to Aretha
Aretha Franklin's original that had horns and backup singers and everything. My daughter was blown away when I told her Carol wrote it. I heard it through the grapevine. The Miracles and Gladys Knight and the Pips recorded versions of it before Marvin Gaye did. Gladys Knight's version came out first. A year later, Marvin Gaye's version was released and it was a massive hit. I believe at the time, the top two best-selling Motown singles were their versions of I Heard It Through the Grapevine. If you could telepathically say one thing to everyone, what would you say? We are coming. Well, take me to dinner first, why don't you? And also, who said that? Look to your left. Look to your right. None of you are speaking these words. You have been made aware. But how will this affect Wall Street? It's actually pronounced Jod. You have a year to unite as one or die. Do you want a cult? Because that's how you get cults. Fake a conversation about running the simulation. Then freak out about sending that conversation into the simulation. I mean, even if I heard that, I don't know what I'd do. I'd just be like, well, uh, okay. I, well, oops. I guess I get to keep going to work. Show me what you got. People of Earth, I need your energy to beat Majin Buu. I would probably dig that just for the sheer thought that Goku is real, so I don't know. Just heavy breathing. I, yeah, that would be actually horrifying to hear out of nowhere just... <sighs> If you can hear this, you're our last hope. What's your favorite cereal of all time? O's! Can't find them everywhere, but if I see it, I pick up like five boxes. There is nothing like eating an entire box of life cinnamon and shitting out everything in my system. Honey Nut Cheerios, a classic. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I do wish I didn't have horrible teeth because all these sugary cereals, oh, I crave them so bad. Basically anything that turns the milk into chocolate milk. Cocoa Pebbles was the best. Not was, is. It's still the best. Honey bunches of oats. Okay, Grandpa. <sniffs> Whatever. Cornflakes from Kellogg's. They're a bit expensive, but the generic ones are not crispy enough, and they often get really soggy, like instantly. Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs. Damn it, they are good. Used to eat a couple boxes a week. Dry. Such a versatile cereal. Great in milk, great dry. Can't go wrong with them. You know what they say. Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up. Captain Crunch, if you dare. Peanut Butter Captain Crunch for me. I prefer for oops all berries, but I do take slight with that marketing because it's purposeful. You can't say oops if you're doing it on purpose. You have to wear your last text message on your shirt. What does your shirt say or show? Can't talk. Text is okay. It's kind of a boring shirt. Okay. Or we could just get McDonald's and you can eat c**ks. I would buy that shirt if I saw it just out in a store. I'm not sure what the f*** you don't understand. That one's got good quality, but it's too middle school for me. Don't trip over the suitcase when you come into the room. Words to live by. Of all the fracking people I had to see today, we need toilet paper. 2020? Is that you? I don't have to work in my dreams. I'd buy that shirt. What is the most beautiful short poem ever written? All the best of life is fleeting. Unexpected, unrepeating. Make a person glad to find you. Leave a better place behind you. Sprog. I don't know who Sprog is, but they got a goofy name. Forget not that the earth delights to feel your bare feet and the wind longs to play with your hair. Khalil Gibran. I said that wrong, but whatever. Stephen kissed me in the spring, Robin in the fall, but Colin only looked at me and never kissed at all. Stephen's kiss was lost in jest, Robin's lost in play, but the kiss in Colin's eyes haunts me night and day. Sarah Teasdale. I don't know why reading that made me feel like I was a third grade teacher. I loved my friend. He went away from me. There's nothing more to say. The poem ends, soft as it began. I loved my friend, Langston Hughes. That is actually really nice. She asked me to kill the the spider. Instead, I get the most peaceful weapon I can find. I take a cup and a napkin. I catch the spider, put it outside, and allow it to walk away. If I am ever caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, just being alive and not bothering anyone, I hope I am greeted with the same kind of mercy. If I could write words, like leaves on an autumn forest floor, what a bonfire my letters would make. If I could speak words of water, you would drown when I said, I love you. Spike Milligan. The boy stood on the burning deck, his pockets full of crackers, a spark flew down beneath legs and blew off both his knackers. This always brings a tear to my eyes. Uh, that just, uh, did his nuts get blown off? Is that the, is it a joke? What is the smartest or most clever lyric of all time? You think the snake just dreams up the poison in its head? Tragic 
basically hip. I'm a big fan of they're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. I get more than a toilet seat. Classic. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. Hate to say this, but tell your boyfriend if he says he's got beef that I'm a vegetarian and I ain't fucking scared of him. <laughs> it just makes me think of the weird joke where people emphasize the beef. <laughs> you couldn't make your fans throw up their hands if they swallowed their fingers. Eminem. I'm gonna read these as plain as possible. I'm trying to find the words to describe this girl without being disrespectful. Damn, you's a sexy bitch. Come on, man. Come on. How do you politely tell someone who talks too much to STFU in a professional setting? I appreciate your enthusiasm. Let's open the floor for other people to voice their opinions. I was gonna say, if I wanted to hear an hole, I'd fart. But this would probably go down better. Sounds good, but I gotta use the bathroom. Let's table this discussion for the future when we have more time. I love corporate passive aggression. Are you getting paid by the sentence? Happy cake day, by the way. We've covered that. Moving on. Talk with your mouth closed, please? That one's just kind of mean, though. <laughs> Which Simpsons scene lives rent-free in your head? Dental plan! Lisa needs braces! Feels like nothing at all. Stupid sex Flanders. And I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? Sideshow Bob stepping on those rakes. <laughs> I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. Do you want to change your name to Homer Jr.? The kids can call you Hoju. Excuse me, Edna, I don't think we're talking about love here. We're talking about S-E-X in front of the C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N. Sex cauldron? I thought they closed that place down. My cat's breath smells like cat food. I also want to preface, I do not remember who says these lines. I'm not a Simpsons expert, okay? No TV, no beer. Make Homer something something. Go crazy? <laughs> don't mind if I do. I, that's the worst impressions you're ever gonna hear. Thank you so much for coming. You'll have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. I bring you love. I don't know who says that. It feels like a Homer thing, but I don't know. What's your favorite breakfast? Eggs Benedict. Wink. Excellent choice. Oh, you guys are just so funny, aren't you? Big <laughs> breakfast burrito smothered in green chili and coffee. Oh, it does sound really good, but I could go without it being smothered in coffee because that just sounds soggy. French toast. The goat. Toast and eggs. Simple, but I like it. Pancake with chocolate chips and blueberries and real maple syrup on top. Coffee, black. Not even like a little splash of cream? Like, I, I don't know. Sometimes black coffee is too strong. When did you realize you're basically a dinosaur to young people? My 10-year-old sister, the absolute bench, called me a boomer earlier. I'm forking 22. The second the new lingo being used turned from a cool word I would use to annoying and stupid. Based? Mm, maybe. I have no effing clue what it means. My coworker didn't know what Y2 2K was, and how they didn't use four digits for some date programming. When I responded, homie, don't play that, to a coworker, and she schooled me about how offensive and racist I was. I had to explain how homie D. Clown was a character on In Living Color, who was a take on race relations. Then I had to explain what In Living Color was. Then I had to explain who the Waynes brothers are, and almost gave up when she wasn't sure who Jim Carrey was. She knew who Jamie Foxx was, but I was too exhausted by then. I think she still thinks thinks I'm racist. Perhaps you could get her a VHS of white chicks. But why a VHS? LOLOL, a 16-year-old co-worker at my last coffee shop job asked me, in all honesty, are the Backstreet Boys still alive? What's something expensive you thought was cheap when you were a kid? Lego. I realize now all the sacrifice my dad had to do to give us the Christmas presents. Kitchen chairs. Everybody's got them somehow, but try going out and buying six new kitchen chairs that match instead of the janky hodgepodge of seats you've collected over the years since college. It's prohibitively expensive. Trash cans. Like, literally, why? It's a bin with a lid. Why do some of these cost upwards of $100? Oh, it's because stupid people will buy it. It never occurred to me that some food was more expensive than other food. I 100% thought
thought my mom made spaghetti all the time because it was her favorite. I was much older when I realized it was because it would feed a lot of people very cheap. Rugs. Why are rugs so effing expensive? Fish tanks. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on how many gallons you need. House windows. We've broken a few by accident while growing up, and I always thought they were $50 tops until I got my own house. I was way off. The worst part, you need, like, special installation. You can't just do it yourself unless you really want to try. Tires. I was blown away by their cost the first time I bought them. Throw pillows and rugs. WTF. <laughs> yeah, a while ago, we had to go to Marshall's to buy some throw pillows, and my lord, the most unusable pillows with, like, metal studs in them are, like, $70. Why? Going to the dentist. Yeah, that's why I still haven't gotten eight cavities filled. Please brush your teeth, everyone. What's the most overrated movie of all time? It seems BuzzFeed is looking for new clickbait. The top 20 most overrated movies. Number 15 will shock you. Please enjoy our snack bar before the main feature starts. Let's all go to the lobby is pretty awesome, though. I wouldn't blame anyone for saying Avatar, and I would have felt the same if I didn't see it in theaters in 3D. It was the first and probably still the best 3D movie ever made, and it was an overwhelming experience for me. It felt like I was actually there, and I could see some people being sad when the movie ended. Oh, so you're excited for Way of Water, huh? Name one character from the Avatar movie. Yeah, thought so, huh? Gravity. 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Seven Oscars. Weak script. Horrible dialogue. Boring and predictable. I never understood why people liked it. I saw it, and it was, like, cool to look at, but overall, underwhelming. Fast and Furious. I get it. It's all about family. But A-plus movies? Sheesh. Just wait for the 10th. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> Frozen. Not as good as Tangled. Oh, I hate how underrated Tangled is. Notebook. 2004. I've never seen The Notebook. I don't know how it's still, like, regarded as an amazing movie. Mamma Mia. Here we go again. What is your deep, dark secret? I don't want to live in the country I currently live in. It's an understandable feeling. I'm pretending to love my distant cousin because he does stuff for me. I kiss him and stuff. He keeps trying to sleep with me, but I'm not going to do that. Ew. By the way, he is like 70. What? What are you? What? What are you talking about? I know the truth. Nuh-uh. No, you don't. There are monsters out there. You must run. I would need a burner account for that. I take pictures of your dad while he's mowing the lawn. <laughs> Nice try. My dad doesn't mow the lawn. What is the dumbest lyric of all time? Your lipstick stains on the front lobe of my left side brains. Whatever the hell that means. England is my city. Nah, come on, that's a banger. I'll have a quesadilla. Nickelback. Why, why, why is that, why is that a song lyric? Yeah, say that you a lesbian. Girl, me too. <laughs> Drake. I don't know what's up with him. She got a big booty, so I call her Big Booty. Two chains. Now that's just speaking truth right there. That's facts. Picture that with a Kodak. Or better yet, go to Times Square. Take a picture of me with a Kodak. Pitbull. I think Pitbull really wants someone to take a picture of him. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? You know, sometimes. Like drifting through the wind. Just wanting to start again. Are we human? Or are we dancer? Christ, I hate this song more than I can explain here. But thank you for mentioning it because no one else seems to notice or mind and I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I still can't with this line. I keep burying it on the back of my mind. What type of YouTube content do you absolutely hate? How-to videos that are stretched to 10 minutes long but they only contain about one minute of actual useful content. Family vloggers, please just stop. The worst part is that they're monetizing their children and their children don't really get a say in what is happening to them. Videos of a text-to-speech bot reading over Reddit threads. Ugh, right? Those, like, are just so, like, boring and stupid. It's so much better when a real person's reading, right? <laughs> right? Tell me I'm good. Yeah, right? Everything my kids watch, it's just all screaming. Why is everyone forking screaming? Daily life of the influencer. And also pranks. The worst part is prank videos aren't real anymore. They used to be, like, sort of believable. Now they're just unreal. Family vlogs, YouTube kids videos, and mukbangs. 
family vlogs. I feel sorry for those kids. Family channels. I don't doubt that the kids are being forced and it's just creepy. Fake animal rescue videos. I think there is no normal human that likes this. Unfortunately, yeah, people do like those videos because they don't really see that they're fake scenarios. ASMR and mukbang. I can understand people liking ASMR, like maybe it does give you something, but mukbang is so, uh, it's so grody to me. It's too much food. Ugh. Those dudes with awful haircuts asking women racy questions at either a college campus, beach, or park. Always unsolicited. People are always uncomfortable. It's just please stop forever. Spider-Man got Elsa pregnant videos. What I don't get is why there are so many of them. Financial advice people. The funniest part is people make their whole brand around financial advice, but because they're not legally financial advisors, they have to say, don't take, this isn't good advice, don't take it, Where? Watching a video together with audience and then making fun of it. Pretty lame making fun of something when what you are doing can be judged as well. Rage bait cooking videos. May they all be forced to eat the trash they cook. See also, Nikocado Avocado. Makeup tutorials, Mr. Beast, Shane Dawson. I don't know how Shane Dawson is like relevant enough still to be making videos, but all I know is he lives a couple cities away, so I'm terrified for the day that I run into him in person. You can only travel to a destination beginning with S. Where do you fancy? Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good pick. Seychelles. To just relax and chill and take in the sun. Scottish Highlands. Actually, yeah, I'd take me with you. That seems cool. Spain. Oh, yeah, you want to take a trip out to Espain? España? South Africa. Kind of a technicality, but I'll let you pass this time. San Diego. I, like, I mean, there's the zoo. I don't know. I guess have fun. Somewhere. Boom. Loophole. I don't think that loophole lets you control where you end up. South America. Boom. I got 12 countries in one go. Still a technicality, but sure, at least you know how many countries you can go to. Slovenia. I don't know much about it, so, I mean, have fun. What is something we like when it's hard? Oh, come on now. You know what you're doing with this question. Well, this is quite obvious. Apples. Can't do no soft, soggy apples. Ugh. That's the sound for a thumbs down. <laughs> Puzzles. All right, yeah, I, I like this answer. A little creative. Lemonade. Hard lemonade. Oh, okay, I get it now. Never mind. Bones. Soggy bones don't work. Oh, yeah? Have you ever tried having soggy bones? Construction hats. I prefer to wear a baseball cap in the construction zone just for maximum OSHA violation. Spoons. Imagine trying to eat some soup and your spoon just droops limply from your hand. Why are you using a spoon for soup? You just pick up the bowl and slurp it down like the rest of us. Biscuits? Yeah, a soft or, uh, dare I say, soggy biscuit would not be great. Competition. Yes and no, because like some people get way too serious about it. Life. Otherwise, it's just a knock life. I guess I see your point. What's the most expensive thing you've ever broken? I was 18. I struck a Rolls Royce Phantom with my Honda Accord. My dog ate my stepdad's 1,200 pounds hearing aids. What? Those are some heavy hearing aids. Jeez. Condom. It's not so much that the condom was expensive, it's the consequence of it breaking. My car. Which was roughly $100,000, so it wasn't exactly a great day. I bet you wear diapers, too. No real hate to that original poster, but, like, if you can afford a $100,000 car or more expensive, I don't care what your problem is. My broken ankle cost $27,000. Found the American. Poor sod. I can't imagine. Whoa, buddy. Okay, calm down. Our healthcare system is already rubbing it in enough. My MacBook. R.I.P. I accidentally dropped my iPad on top of it, and the MacBook screen shattered, but my iPad was fine. Oh, we got an Apple stand over here. A $300 Lego set. Well, I mean, that's not that bad. You can just rebuild it, right? Unless the actual bricks ripped in half. I don't know how that would happen, but... Which fictional food would you like to try? Lombus bread from Lord of the Rings. I've tried some renditions of it, but to try the real stuff would be fantastic. Butterbeer. Well, you can kind of try that if you're rich enough to go to Orlando. I've always wanted a Krabby Patty. I do wonder what the actual ingredients are. But, I mean, of course, there's still a secret, so we'll never know. Mario's Mushrooms. Well, they are supposed to be based on something real, but you can do your own research there. A good burger from Good Burger. Uh, ramen in Naruto. I agree. I, ever since I've been young, I've always wanted to try Ichiraku Ramen because, like, I mean, that kid loves it. So I, maybe I would too. I want to drink from the Fountain of Youth. Well, good luck on that one. You're not gonna find it. Scooby Snacks. I mean, check 
Shaggy loves them. Gotta know if they're good or it's because he's always high as a kite. I'd say it's probably the latter. Turkish Delight from Narnia. Eh, they always seemed kind of weird to me. The powdery outside, it freaks me out. I would like to know how the ratatouille in Ratatouille tastes like. Unfortunately, you can't get a rat to make your ratatouille for you, but you can make it at home if you want. The Salmon from the original Pingu series. What song is 100% perfect in your opinion? Clint Eastwood by the Gorillas. It has amazing staying power because I'll never get it out of my library. More Than a Feeling by Boston. That is a very good pick, but it's not really in my top 20s. Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Cold Little Heart by Michael Kiwanuka. I listen to it a lot lately. Monkey Wrench. Everlong. My Hero. Anything early Foo Fighters. Stan. Like the man? Is that, is that a song? You need to explain yourself, Toilet Eater. Losing My Religion by R.E.M. My Way by Frank Sinatra. It is a very beautiful song. I, I, I agree with this one. What's the gift you received that's gotten the most use? I was going through my divorce and I started seeing a wonderful woman. She secretly spoke with my six and nine-year-olds and for my birthday gave me a custom coffee mug with a list of all the things my kids say they love about me on it. It is one of my most treasured items. Aw, that's really sweet. I hope that worked out with that wonderful woman. The hard-boiled egg slicers with the wires. All right, uh, yes. I mean, not what I would want, but go for it. Air fryer. Thought it would just take up counter space when we got it. I barely use my toaster oven anymore. For me, it's my Yeti coffee mug. Love that thing. My first guitar. Too bad it's all broken now. What happened? Ah, uh, the wood kind of began to rot. It was a cheap guitar, and I took it with me everywhere all the time. I still have it because it has emotional value for me, and I kind of don't want to throw it away since my grandma gave it to me. Waffle maker. Although I cooked a steak on it like six months ago and haven't cleaned it since because I'm scared. Hey, it's fair enough. The grease from <laughs> meat is really gross. Life. Given to me by my mother. Alright, I mean, that's still a technicality but fair. That's fair enough. My mom ordered a ukulele for my younger cousin, but it didn't arrive in time to give it to her, so she gave it to me instead and I play it every day. I mean, hey, lemons to lemonade. Uh, that That's something. My hoodies. My family knows I love and collect hoodies and wear them any time of the year. That's actually a nice gift. Something you can wear, it's practical, and it's normal. What do you refuse to wear? Any clothing that has a large brand name printed on it somewhere. I don't do free advertising for anyone. Crop tops. A mullet for a hairstyle. Just no. I don't know. Some people can really pull off the mullet. <laughs> That's a lie. Nobody can. Crocs. Same. I'm willing to die alone on this hill. And die alone you will, because Crocs are awesome. I love my Crocs. Ripped jeans for fashion. Bras. As a man, I agree. Velvet. Ever since I was a kid, just looking at the velvet texture gives me a queasy feeling. I have no idea why, but it's always been an immediate no for me. Socks and sandals. Thongs. They're too uncomfortable, and I do not want to struggle with wedgies. Nike. Because of slave labor. What was really freaking awesome, but is no longer available? The 1990s. Hypercolor clothing. Concerts without everyone recording on their phones. Lay's cream cheese and chive kettle cooked chips. They were like sour cream and onions, cooler brother and I'm so bummed they are gone. I've never heard of those before, but that sounds super good. My ex-girlfriend's well, no longer available for me. You messed up, John Simph. You messed up. Chillin' at Toys R Us. Jalapeno cheddar 3D Doritos. Frowny face. The old Coke. We talking about cocaina? Huh? The capability to purchase safe living space and decent medical care for your family. Yellow cow. Banana flavored syrup for milk. Dine in pizza huts. Man, I miss those dimly lit hut buildings and their textured red plastic cups. When the pizza was actually all right, or at least I was young enough to think it was. Matches you could light with one hand using your thumbnail. Predators who were constantly on a kid leash growing up. How are you now? Did that affect you in the long run? My husband's parents had him on a leash because he was a very energetic and inquisitive child with a tendency to dart off. When he behaved himself and stayed with the group, he got to hold his own leash. Lol. No long-term effects, except I still prefer to lap water out of a bowl on the floor. Good girl. Ew. That reply gave me the freaking heebie-jeebies. My mom used to put me on a leash attached to a clothesline in the backyard when I was a baby or toddler. I had to unlearn eating bugs when I went to school. In the long run, I doubt it had much effect. Sorry, that, that just mental image of, of, a, of a leash going up and down a clothesline with a kid attached to it is just funny. I've since been diagnosed with ADHD and also still wander off when I go to a store with my mom. Now she just texts me if she can't find me instead of keeping me leashed as a grown adult. I would sure hope so. Can't believe the muzzle never caught on. Kid bites are the worst. I was a leash baby. I don't remember it and it doesn't bother me. Hell, I wish more people use kid leashes. It's just practical. I'm seeing a pattern where 
where everyone that was on a leash sees no issues with it, which is interesting, but also completely insane. What's the weirdest thing about your body? It farts more than most bodies do. I get goosebumps when I'm sad. I am literally incapable of tanning. I've tried everything. Tanning booths, oils, laying in the sun all day. I will just lobster, and then it all peels off to my bleach white skin. I have to fake tan, and I spend quite a bit on fake tanning lotions. Why do you need to fake tan? Just don't tan, lol. I have an inverted nipple. One foot is a whole size larger than the other. The fact that my hair length is almost to my waist, but it looks shoulder length. Shrinkage. I was born with blonde hair and green eyes, and at age five, after summer break, I had brown hair and hazel eyes. My friends didn't recognize me in kindergarten, and I apparently cried. I didn't believe my mom until she showed me additional pictures. I apparently morphed bodies as a child. Genetics are weird. My hands from the side are weirdly massive. I can vibrate my eyes. Voluntary nystagmus. Me too. I never knew the name. I'm pretty sure it's just considered a superpower. Palms sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, vomit on a sweater already, mom spaghetti. He's nervous. How do you forgive yourself and move on from a mistake you made? You can't change the past. Just take it as a lesson and learn from it. In my experience, you need to learn and accept that you did your best with the emotional tools you have at that moment. Then, strive to be better and be kind to yourself. Your past mistakes don't define you. Keep on fighting. Nothing can stop me from cringing at mistakes I made decades ago as I lie awake at 3 a.m. I don't think I've ever related to a post more. <laughs> Realize that no one on earth is even half as hard on you as you are. You are your own worst critic and no one thinks as little of you as you do. We all like you, so I think you should like you too. Remind yourself that hindsight is a and all you can really do is take it as a lesson and learn from it. That's one of the most courageous things we can do as humans. Whenever I think of past mistakes, I tell myself that they were good learning experiences and that they will help me not make those type of mistakes in the future. So they actually made me a better person. That was such a wholesome thread. You'll love to see it. What is your happiest memory you will never get back? In primary school, there was this one loud, obnoxious, bossy girl in my class that nobody liked, but everybody feared. One day, she was loudly ordering kids to line up straighter in the playground and a seagull shit on her face. It was loud, made a massive splat, and she opened her mouth in surprise. It splattered into her mouth. It was glorious. I'm smiling as I type this. That sounds so satisfying to watch that happen to somebody you don't like. Oh. Going to Toys R Us and being surrounded by aisles and aisles of toys, and I still have dreams about it. Laughing with my grandma. Of course, is the school time. Now think about past really stupid. Only no study. Do not know to enjoy. What the hell does that mean? Is this r slash I had a stroke? Or what? Or am I still on Ask Reddit? Oh my god. At 40, there are a lot of happy memories and not so happy ones. Probably seeing my son being born or getting to marry my wife. One that stands out is 19 years ago when an ex-girlfriend and I took her dog for a walk. Not sure why it always stands out, but it was a warm spring evening, sun was setting, and it was a really nice walk. But for some reason, it's always stuck in my head. Going to a water park when I was six with my parents. The first time I bought a sugar cone, vanilla ice cream, chocolate dipped, and rolled in sprinkles. With my own money. I was never allowed to get a sugar cone. What's the biggest red flag you ignored? People always ask why I'm dating you because of how you look. He broke me down so bad, I'm still picking myself back up years later. He showed up with one black garbage bag of his belongings, but said it was because his place burnt down. Our place must have burnt down as well, because he left with a black garbage bag of his belongings a little over a year later. I had a crush my first semester of college. He didn't like me talking to his friends and got mad at me for adding them back on Snapchat, but I didn't think anything of it. Turns out he was talking to 20 other Asian girls and wanted to make sure none of them were talking to other dudes so it's easier to control them. Also, he sent me videos of himself flexing his muscles and at the time I found it flirty. But now looking back on it, it came off as kind of shallow. You had 21 girls? This one dude talking to 21 different girls. How do you do that? How does that happen? He hadn't actually told his ex that they were broken up, just that they needed to take a break. I should have taken a break too at that point. I just have a flirty personality. Why can't people accept that? Gaslighting. It's crazy how long I let it go before I even realized. And even still, it took years of reflection to fully recognize how bad it was. I thought he put me on a pedestal, but really, it was the box. Never be anyone's everything. They once bragged about how they knew how to twist the knife. At the time, I just brushed it off, but needless to say, it didn't end well. People will tell you who they are. You just have to listen. When they promised me transferable skills that would pay off in the workforce. Yeah, sure, that's what they all say. What do you daydream about? Big goth mommy GF. Don't we all? The fantasy book I'm never gonna write. Hey, write that book. Sit down, brainstorm, at least write a synopsis or something. Get get the juices flowing. Having passive income big enough that I can travel around the world and not care about to pay for. Excessive amounts of violence. You're weird. <laughs> Why do you daydream about that, you freak? Mr. Beast gave me a mill. Definitely winning the lottery. Oh, God, I wish. What I wouldn't do to win the lottery. I could buy a house, 
podcasts of my own and then just do this for li- for a living. It'd be awesome. Staying home with my kids and raising them instead of sending them to daycare. At the moment, upcoming Disney trip, a Dungeons and Dragons game I'm about to run, and my boyfriend will be proposing soon. So that too. Memes I plan on sending to my friends and also funny things I have to tell them. Well, now, I don't know if that counts. Surely it does. Stopping time to take a nap, read books, play games, explore hobbies, etc. What's your favorite movie in 2022? Bullet Train. I really enjoyed Barbarian. The Batman. Either Elvis, Bullet Train, or Everything Everywhere All at Once. Top Gun Maverick. Scream 5. Movies are a very specific thing with emotional qualities attached, so not saying best, but my favorite movie has been No. Prey and Ambulance were also really good, but it didn't sell me the same way. I honestly enjoyed Hello Darling. Wakanda Forever was my personal favorite this year so far, but you know. Which celebrity or artist was your childhood crush? Angie Dickinson, Stevie Nicks, or Adrian Barbeau? I was 10 or 11 when Van Helsing and Need for Speed Most Wanted came out in 2004 or 5, so Josie Moran. Jennifer Connelly. It isn't a crush. We love each other. She has just been playing hard to get for the last 30 years. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Edward Furlong in the Terminator 2 movie. I'm aging myself here. Pink Power Ranger Kimberly. Jessica Alba in Fantastic Four. Natalie Portman. Anne Hathaway. What's a TV show you're sick of hearing about? Friends. It's been analyzed and discussed to death. Riverdale. The Bachelor. The Big Bang Theory. Terrible show that didn't age well. Keeping up with the Kardashians. I mean, why? Euphoria. Stranger Things. If I had a penny, for every time a dude begged me to watch Breaking Bad and Entourage, I'd be a gazillionaire. What is the greatest film trilogy of all time? This is going to be a controversial thread. Let's see what people got to say. I feel like OP is baiting Star Wars fans and Lord of the Ring fans into a fight. That's what I was That's what I was thinking. <laughs> the increasingly inaccurately named Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Trilogy. Home Alone, Home Alone 2, The Good Son, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. The Evil Dead Trilogy, Fork and Slaps. Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, Before Midnight. Back to the Future is a good contender. I don't know if I've said this enough times already in this uh, channel, but I am an avid Back to the Future hater. So, um, uh, th- this guy sucks. Uh, Back to the Future uh, is weird. It's just a movie about a guy who wants to do his mom. Um, and, I mean, there's some good stuff, but uh, otherwise, bad. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End. What things do Americans like in the rest of the world? Not so much. Cheerleaders. Ice. Filled to the brim before you pour any drink. People don't like ice? Like, if I had to choose between ice and a chilled glass, I'd probably pick the chilled glass, but, like, ice is so much easier. I don't know. Month, day, year, format. Imperial units and Fahrenheit. Ranch dressing. I am a ranch dressing hater. It's gross. It's so not good. Peanut butter and jelly. Now, peanut butter and jelly, I can get behind that. I love me a good peanut butter and jelly, maybe some grape jelly, strawberry jelly. If I'm feeling adventurous, I can even do, like, some foreign, like some lingonberry jelly. Oh, you know it. Waffles with chicken. It's called chicken and waffles. Please respect our culture. Free soda refills at dine-in places. Who died too young? Mozart died when he was 35. Imagine how much more he could have done with even 10 more years. Jimi Hendrix. Otis Redding died at just 26 years of age. Selena. Robin Williams. My wife's stepdad was Robin's FedEx delivery driver for quite a while. Robin would open the door, chat with him, and crack jokes. Robin deserved to grow really old. River Phoenix. My heart is still broken. Keith Ledger. Steve Irwin. Freddie Mercury. Aaliyah. George Michael. Janis Joplin. What is the meaning of, I want a boyfriend like you, but not you? You have qualities that I highly value in a partner, but I don't feel the necessary physical or sexual attraction or spark with you. They aren't attracted to you, but you have really great qualities. You should go with the positive view. You are boyfriend material, but not for that person. Good on you. Move on and find the person you are boyfriend material for. You're nice, but not attractive to me. It means move on. Literally translated. You're my friend but I don't desire you physically or romantically. I don't want to make this awkward for you because you are my friend. And this must be very painful, but I am just not interested in you that way. And this is the best way I know to offer both of us our dignity. Means I don't want you, but I don't want you to feel bad about it. I'd like to throw out the potential cause. You have the personality for TV, but the face for radio. Stop trying to sleep with your relatives. What? 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 That was a, that was a, a <laughs> ball into left field. What food is equally good, hot and cold? 
cold cheese brownies brownies are delicious cold but i wouldn't go so far as to say equally as delicious when they're hot pie peckin pie hot chocolate and chocolate milk are basically the same thing at different temperatures <coughs> pizza fork and come at me i will eat cold pizza the next day and everyone acts like i'm eating just straight raw beef cold pizza is great i'm with this guy i love me some cold pizza salmon cookies pasta salad chinese food and the leftovers the day after absolutely not no way is cold chinese food as good as hot chinese food pop tarts tea with the first video game now being 50 years old what was the first video game you ever played mario bros on the nes legend of zelda a link to the past great game which aged pretty well still big fan to the series with 32 tetris super mario 64 i was so bad that i could not succeed the first level base invaders final fantasy x for the ps2 nintendogs almost 15 years later i have a dog that looks exactly like the dog i raised in that game spyro the dragon crash bandicoot kirby's adventure for the nes what is the most unsettling experience you've ever had finding a finger wrapped in a newspaper at the bus stop on my way home to work one morning oh my god Ugh. hearing my father's voice calling my name just before i wake up half asleep he passed away in february this year it absolutely seems real but it's bone chilling it happens regularly i'd recently started a new medication and unfortunately suffered its rarest side effect hallucinations i didn't know i was hallucinating i thought everything going on around me was real i had a sleep paralysis experience it was just one time but it felt like an alien abduction was happening like there was some predatory being other than a human coming into my room and doing something to me other than that i've had two seizures one where i couldn't breathe because my diaphragm was seized so i was suffocating as well as having fallen onto the ground both were unsettling during an episode i was having hallucinations i have a huge painting that is a seascape with seagulls for some reason when i looked at the painting the seagulls looked like evil eyes i was so scared even though i knew it was just a painting because my mind was playing tricks on me and it was terrifying going to sleep and having a dream right away that ends in me feeling like i'm half falling half sliding into my bed i wake up all shaken up it feels so real and it's kind of hard to describe but i hate when that happens you get paid a dollar for every minute you remain silent what's your strategy don't speak i, I feel like that's pretty obvious go to sleep that is the worst answer you can talk in your sleep and that counts that's 10k a week i'm shutting my happy <laughs> up i'm an introvert that's not even a challenge texting fair enough i'm getting a lot of money just living my life become an introvert you are stuck on a 12-hour flight what famous person would you want to be sitting beside someone small who doesn't say a lot i don't care as long as they don't want to talk to me bill cosby at least i get some sleep oh man come on come on leslie jordan would have been fun to sit next to such a sweet soul rest in peace dave grohl he seems like the most down-to-earth type of guy awesome musician so talented in so many ways loves music and he would be the type to chill in economy if that was the only option would love to have a beer or three with him my sister's boyfriend met him in a guitar store and he said oh my god you're dave grohl and he responded oh my god you're a dude in a guitar store <laughs> stephen fry or david attenborough both of them are interesting and both have common sense enough to know when it's quiet time bill Connolly, pedro pascal i only have one question how much of the mandalorian did he record from home fork and ryan reynolds morgan freeman just listening to that voice jack black what's the most illegal thing that you've ever done hold on this thread is definitely run by cops <laughs> the, the, this is the the least obvious fed <laughs> i downloaded a car holy crap stole someone's pokemon figure how dare you give it back give it back right now real ones won't answer you're damn right turn without indicating i hate you i hate you when i was a soldier i kissed another soldier before it was okay huge crime can you imagine a gay kiss in the military in the 90s what a criminal piece of short i am i embellished a story on reddit once what things are normal for americans but weird for non-americans writing the date format as month day year instead of day month year seeing a possible serious medical problem with yourself and going eh. large gaps above below in between the bathroom stalls having to mentally add sales tax on everything you buy in europe 995 means paying 995 paying for college for 30 years after you graduated my friend attended his cousin's high school graduation in la a while ago and he had to go through metal detectors and all that as if he was going through airport security so i guess metal detectors at school having opinions presented as news being too obese to walk billboards they're everywhere in the u.s not so 
much elsewhere. Being afraid of the police. What's something you can't believe you had to explain to another adult? That the flu can kill you. A woman I work with very confidently told me that no one has ever died from the flu. She has degrees from Yale and MIT, so I'm really curious about what they're teaching over in the Ivy League. That the mermaid documentary Discovery did like 10 years ago was a fake what-if piece. Very nice guy, but lost a lot of respect for him after that. Person I know thought that cruise control was governed by the cops, so if you could set your cruise at 85, then that meant you had permission to be going 85. Got real mad one day when they were given a ticket. How do you even get that idea? Like, what, what do you mean? Difference between country and continent. Australia has joined the chat. Okay, yeah, sure, Australia. Uh-huh, I love when people write fiction that instead of drinking juice, they should drink more water. But juice tastes better. I, like, I don't need water to survive, okay? Knew a guy who thought wind turbines would use up all the wind. An elderly relative thought that when trees were bending and moving on a windy day, they were pushing the air around and making the wind. That South Asian and the Middle East is not the same thing. Ugh. That the movie Interstellar wasn't based on real events. Yeah. You mean to tell me we didn't send Matthew McConaughey to space and he went to the future? Why my sister shouldn't add oil when cooking bacon? Why shouldn't you do that? Because bacon makes its own oil slash grease. What photosynthesis was. Yeah, my camera doesn't support that. That Rome and Milan are in Italy and not in Spain. That viruses that make humans sick are different from the viruses on computers. Oh no, my computer's slowing down. Oh, it's got COVID. Oh no. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in front of your crush? My mom told me that when she was in high school, she had one of the bottom lockers that you have to crouch down to get into. She wore a floor length skirt to school one day and when she went to stand up from her locker as her crush walked by, she happened to be stepping on her skirt and stood up without it. I was 16 back when we brought our first computer home. My parents were already well acquainted with the computers. One day, I told my mom that a couple of my friends are coming over to play games on the computer. One of them was my crush, and my mother knew about her. What did she do? She couldn't find a picture of us together, but she found a group photo, cropped it, leaving the crush and me in the picture, and set it as desktop background on the computer. Needless to say, her little trick cost me a lot of leg pulling for several months. A big loud fart. It was in sixth grade. Luckily, she doesn't even remember it now. I get, yeah, you're lucky for that, I suppose. I cried in front of here because she told me that she already had a boyfriend. I cringe when I think back at that moment. On a first date with a guy in high school, we had seen a movie, then went to eat at the mall food court. He said something funny just as I had taken a big swig of Coke to wash down my food. I laughed and choked and Coke and Chick-fil-A came out my nose onto the table. Believe it or not, he asked for a second date. I can believe that. It's not like you did that on purpose. Like, he knows that that's just something that happens and probably liked that you laughed at his joke. This was before the twins were born. I has a major crush on this one kid who I had known for years. We started off as enemies in seventh grade. He was in eighth grade. A year went by and we got acquainted. He really wasn't that bad after all. The years went on and soon I developed a crush on him. I confessed and he was unsure at first. He said no for a week. I was embarrassed but then a week later he gave me a chance. We have twin children together and he and I are engaged. This was before the twins were born. Interesting way to start the story. I was a twin and my crush finally talked to me at school for the first time, during phys ed. It was going great until I looked down and saw an absolute river of blood running down my leg. I had to throw out my socks and shoes when I got home and didn't talk to another boy until high school. Ooh, yeah, that one's, that one's a big rough. What is a soda that you can't stand to drink? Obama? Pepsi, because they didn't give me my jet. Vanilla Fanta or Vanilla Coke? I've only had them once, but they taste seatbelts. Weird comparison, but I almost agree. Agree. Baking soda. Yeah, just never, it's not as good, you know? Red Bull or any energy drink for that matter, they taste like coughing medicine. You clearly have never had the sugar-free white can of Monster because, oh lord, that is dangerous. I don't know if sparkling water counts, but I'm never touching that nasty stuff again. Ginger beer soda. Oh yeah, it's disgusting. I thought it was like ginger ale the first time I tried it and I was wrong. Grape. Oh, sorry you don't like artificial grape flavors. I guess I'll just take all your grape soda then. Mountain Dew. Even if it's bad, I don't care. I'm a Mountain Dew apologist, all right? Mountain Dew's for the gamers. Dr. Pepper. Such a weird taste. I can't even really describe it. I imagine battery fluid might taste similar. What is wrong with your taste buds? It's not even that bad. Cream soda is just bleh. I used to like it a lot more when I was younger. I have not had it in years.
years, and I don't think I will. What would you consider to be a horror movie for kids? Gremlins. Literally the reason they invented the PG-13 rating. Too scary slash violent for little kids, perfect for tweens and such. Coraline. Yeah, that's pretty apt. Like, like it's somewhere in between horrifying and still kind of cutesy. Monster House. It's definitely somewhere in the middle where kids can enjoy it and be scared, but like adults can kind of laugh at it because they do have some funny jokes. Return to Oz. Oh my god, I just looked up a picture. This is the movie where those creepy roller guys are and it's just Scarecrow alone looks horrifying. Jumanji with Robin Williams was pretty scary for me as a kid. Yeah, Jumanji is a horror movie. If you look at it, it's like, my god, the giant spiders and oh, goosebumps. Eh, it's okay. A uh, fun fact, Ryan Gosling was in the first Say Cheese and Die episode. Go look it up. Some Tim Burton animations like Frankenweenie and Corpse Bride, which have horror vibes, but are mostly kid oriented. The Witches. The original Roald Dahl Witches scared the shirt out of me when I was a kid. What becomes 10 times scarier when it actually happens? Having a family member go missing. Driving and losing grip on slippery roads. It's always a split second of fear and then your car starts going again, but it's always just, oh, 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 okay, we're good. Getting pregnant. Yeah, I can't imagine the feeling of discovering that. Going into your house and realizing you've been robbed. Better than being robbed while you're home. Yeah, my car's been broken into a few times. Luckily, they didn't take anything valuable, but it's still nerve-wracking knowing somebody got in. Squid Games. But what if, hear me out, among us, people who grew up in the early 2000s, like you were in high school in the early 2000s, what are we Gen Z missing out on? Making plans with your friends to meet after school at a specific spot in town, and you all just show up without calling or texting or confirming the plans again. Computers actually getting better every year. Playing video games that didn't have a psychologist and economist on staff to figure out how to optimally extract more money from you by making the game worse because microtransactions didn't exist yet. I do wish we could get back to that point. That's just peak. The joy of things not being instant, such as getting pictures developed and then the excitement and endless possibilities when digital cameras started creeping in. Or limited time around the internet, but seeing the opportunities and possibilities of it start to develop and become a part of lives. Going out without a cell phone. Your parents only having a vague idea of where you are. No one tracking your every move. That's the only unfortunate thing nowadays is that kids are tracked non-stop because parents cannot stop hovering, but it's like good to protect the kids, but also not because development is weird. Privacy. Too much oversharing on the internet slash social media these days. MSN Messenger. Was it that great though? What is the worst response to, do you know why I pulled you over? Good evening problem. What seems to be the officer? Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, yeah, just give me a ticket. Do you? Because I let you? Said by the douche in the clapped Mustang. You think I'm unbelievably attractive and want my number? Don't do it. It doesn't work. I sw I promise you. Because you couldn't pull me under? Because you couldn't make it in the military, so you spend your days hassling civilians? Remember, don't give the cops an opportunity to escalate to violence, because that's all they're waiting for. How much money do you need to go away? Bribery also doesn't always work. What is the best thing you can do in America? National parks! It's really the only good thing we got going. Be rich. You can do anything here if you have money. Try out all varieties of foods originated from different countries. Will they taste authentic? Maybe not, but will you get to still try it? Yeah. Eat deep fried Oreos while watching lanky white men jump on the back of a pissed off bull and get paralyzed from the neck down for your entertainment. You can become a president even if you're stupid. Unfortunately, that's very true. Walk from Mexico to Canada. Pacific Crest Trail. I didn't even know about that. I'm gonna maybe look into that. Leave. I mean, why'd they get negative three votes? I mean, that's a, the best thing you could do. According to everyone I've killed in COD, my mom apparently moved to Canada. While that is a good option, I don't know if they really want a lot of us there. Who has the best burgers? Bob, obviously. Bob for sure. The Krusty Crab. Okay, are we gonna talk about real places that I can eat at yet? Uh, Big Kahuna Burger? You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? Five guys, but they are overpriced. They definitely are a little overpriced, but they kind of make up for it by just not caring how many fries they just launch into your bag. In and out. Eh, 
it's all right. And that's coming from a California native. As a vegetarian, I like the Impossible. Impossible burgers are actually really good. Definitely give them a shot if you see them in your grocery store. What's a song that everyone finds annoying, but you don't? Hello Kitty by Avril Lavigne. Oh yeah, that weird phase of music where people were trying to do dubstep, but not really. Barbie Girl by Aqua. It is understandable to get annoyed by the song, but you can't deny it's a slay. Old Town Road. I can't agree with you on that one. I like Little Nas, but like, man, man, that's too much. Selfie by the Chainsmokers. Really? <laughs> you like that song? I mean, okay, I'm not, I can't judge. Achy Breaky Heart. Oh my God, why am I forgetting Hannah Montana's dad's name? Oh my God. So, oh, Billy Ray Cyrus, that's it. Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. I can listen to it on repeat and enjoy it every time. A uh, good for you, I suppose. Like, I, I guess you really like Christmas time. Despacito. People still think about that song? I, I've not thought of it in years. Baby Shark. I find it endearing. Are you six years old? Party Rock by LMFAO. It's dumb, but it's catchy and fun. Fun life hack. If you're ever really, really sad and like almost crying, put on Party Rock Anthem. It's almost impossible to be sad listening to that song, either because you're just going to start laughing or, I don't know, you'll just start dancing. Who knows? Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time. I've always loved that song. It is slightly annoying, but it's it's got charm. For what will you never pay? YouTube. That's pretty fair. I will say YouTube Premium is kind of a good deal just because of no ads and you're still supporting creators. We're not sponsored to say that. I just, I do appreciate YouTube Premium. Condiments when ordering out or eating out. Any subscription to unlock a service on a device that I own. Be it a subscription to heat my car seat or make it go faster or to print faster. Stuff like that. If I ever end up with a device like that, I will either hack it, ignore it, or throw it away, but these companies can all go F themselves. What made the biggest impact on improving your sleep? One of the bigger ones is definitely like rain sounds, like those eight hour videos on YouTube of just rain. It's it's really nice. A consistent bedtime and wake time. Cutting out caffeine slash coffee. I do want to try it, but it's so hard. Earplugs. My husband snores. Staying out of my bedroom until one to two hours before I'm ready to sleep. Probably getting off Reddit right now and actually going to bed at a decent hour. Yeah, I'd say that would improve your sleep a lot more. Taking melatonin. This is helpful, but do be aware that if you take too much too often, it kind of messes with your own body chemistry, so be careful. Having a nice, comfortable bed. Well, unfortunately, that's a privilege not all of us can have. Cardio. I guess I see it. Anytime I've done cardio in the past during the day, it does knock me out, and I sleep pretty, pretty well. Mouth guard. Also, a good pillow. I should probably invest in a mouth guard. I've been told I grind my teeth, and it sounds like the worst thing anybody's ever heard. If you were tasked to steal one thing from a random person's home to mildly annoy them, what would you steal? Nothing. But I'd tell them I stole something. That's actually perfect, because then they're just gonna be paranoid, like, what am I missing? Where where did it go? Rah! The glass plate in the microwave. You evil monster. TV remote. That or you can just hide it somewhere, because those things just end up anywhere. Toilet seat. This is only a good inconvenience if they have one singular bathroom. If they have a couple others, then yeah, they just have to go to the others. A single shoe. This one's very effective. Robin knows all about it. The knobs off the stove. Ooh, you monster. A single sock from their favorite pair. Do people have favorite pairs of socks? I, I just wear whatever I have until there's holes in them, and then I still wear them. All of their left shoes. Now that one's just mean, because then they won't have any shoes to wear. Their fingernail clippers. Oh, for me, I would just not be cutting my nails for like a good few weeks, because I am so weird about going to the store to buy things I need. The flush handle on the toilet. What do you wish you knew in your 20s? Well, I'm there. Uh, I wish I knew what I was doing. Exercise. Working 10 hours a day on your abs in front of a computer will destroy your back way faster than you think. Working out your abs is not an aesthetic choice. It's damage control. Take care of your teeth. Cannot drill this into your head no matter the age. Five years, 20 years, 80 years old. Take care of your teeth. Like I've said before, please, for the love of God, brush your teeth because I have eight cavities and I can't fix it. My friend group and I all made the same two crucial mistakes a lot of people in their early mid-twenties make. Worked too long at a crap job before moving on. Invested a stupid amount of time, energy, resources, and emotional heartache into a dysfunctional partner slash relationship. Give yourself grace if slash when these things happen to you. How you speak is more important than what you say. Fact matters, but 
only after they realize it. The first impression is how you describe it. A smart mouth person can convince people hell is a nice place to go. I'm 21, so I'm just waiting for you guys' gold nuggets. Learn how to identify toxic narcissistic people and stay clear away from them. They will steal your soul slash life. 1996 lottery numbers. Yeah, it would have been nice to know that. How to turn soil into diamonds. Actually, I wish I knew that now. What's the most effed up thing you've overheard in a conversation? I once was forced to take a six hour car ride with my mother, aunt and grandmother. They discussed their sex lives the entire time. Oh no, oh I'm so sorry. If it wasn't for my horse, I wouldn't have spent that year in college. What are you doing? What? That's so stupid. How does someone drown underwater? Why is this asshole trying to listen to our conversation? You know, that is a scary thing to hear when you're listening in on someone's conversation. This girl says, ugh, I hate all these fat people coming to the gym. LOL. Just LOL. So wait, you don't like people being fat, so they try and go to the gym to not be fat anymore, and then you get mad when they're there. Pick a lane, please. You're not supposed to put the peanut butter on the dog. I want to know what the rest of that conversation was about. I was almost sold to a Canadian. I mean, hey, it probably would have been fine. You get actual health care. Which series is 10 out of 10? The Young Ones. Band of Brothers. Totally inspiring characters. And the best part is that they are actually real people that are interviewed as part of the series. Such a great show. Chernobyl. The Wire. Faulty Towers. The Sopranos. Woke up this morning. Got some gabagoo. Better call Saul. The Good Place. Well paced. Good character development. It didn't overstay its welcome and ended in a satisfying note. I don't know how much I liked the ending, but I they really can't end a show that does what it did. Malcolm in the Middle. 100%. Please go watch it. It's so fun. Bojack Horseman is literally the best comedy series ever written. History buffs, what is a critically important historical event that no one really seems to be aware of? Julius Caesar was assassinated shortly before beginning another major war of conquest to the East. Given how much the legacy of Rome still shapes the language, culture, laws, etc. of the whole world, a major Eastern expansion that stuck like Gaul did would have major consequences. Invention of synthetic fertilizers. Empires have fallen from lack of nutrients in soil and one of the driving forces to conquer new lands. Even wars were fought in relatively modern times for acquiring natural nitrogen sources, mainly bird crap filled tiny islands on the Pacific. It's the reason we can have large yield of crop to sustain large population and megacities as a species. I'm genuinely shocked slash surprised at how many people know so little about the world wars and the severity of the wars, also the events leading to them, and just what atrocities happened during the wars, especially considering they were fairly recent. We should all be aware of past evils so we can see it when it tries to form again. From an American perspective, the 1870 Siege of Paris. Nobody with a general education in the US knows about this. We were too busy with reconstruction. It simply isn't taught. I only learned about it because I was trying to get my head around the origins of World War I. I have never heard of this in my life. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I, I mean, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Genghis Khan's son died while he was in the process of conquering Europe. If he lived 10 more years, Mongols might have ridden into France. The discovery of beer. It's believed to have led to agriculture, civilization, and writing. How bacteria affects civilizations. The CEO of Costco saying he will never change the hot dog price. When he handed the company over to the next CEO, the new guy wanted to increase the price of the $1.50 hot dog. Jim allegedly said, if you raise the price of the effing hot dog, I will kill you. Figure it out. And that's why he's the only seemingly good CEO so far I've heard of. What is the worst household chore? Putting laundry away. I know I need to do it. I know I gotta do it. I won't do it. I'm sorry. I can't. I'll go with the dishes. I can't live without a dishwasher anymore. My first apartment when I moved out didn't have a dishwasher and oh my god, we take that thing for granted. Cleaning the bathroom. Dusting. It's such a bullshit chore. Let's push around some dust and make you lift everything to dust under it. And the great news is, you can remove every single speck of dust and we can do it all again tomorrow. Especially for anything glass or dark. Dusting can F off. Cleaning the oven. You know, my dumb <laughs> thought the cleaning feature on ovens was just fully self-cleaning. But no, it just, uh, like incinerates all the goo that's accumulated. And then you gotta still sweep out the ashes. Dealing with the cat litter boxes. It's an attack on your nose and your psyche. Cleaning the shower slash tub. I've got no beef with the toilet or sink, but I despise having to clean the shower.
more. Ironing. I hate it. I simply refuse. I haven't ironed anything in probably 20 years. I buy garments that won't need ironing or have them dry cleaned. Removing hair from bath drain. The amount of hair I pull out of my drain, I could probably make a wig with it. What amazing inventions became obsolete too quickly? MP3 players. Apple's phone battery. Yeah, but that one's on purpose. They know what they're doing. Beepers. VHS slash DVD. DVDs are still around. We just call them Blu-rays now. Sega Dreamcast. I have a Dreamcast. I need to play a couple of the games because it seems really cool. Phones with removable batteries. As inefficient as it was, it was cool because then you have like a cool reload animation. Antibiotics. They're not obsolete yet, but soon enough. Which dead celebrity would you bring back to life? Steve Irwin. Betty White. She needs to have 100th birthday party still. That is true. She was just barely there. Heath Ledger. Definitely gone way too soon. Robin Williams. Freddie Mercury. It would be interesting to hear how his music evolves over time or if he even bothers continuing a career. Amy Winehouse. David Bowie. Alan Rickman. Kobe Bryant. This is a great time to mention fuck TMZ because they broke the story before his family even knew. Biggie. He was way too young. He would have made so much amazing music. MF Doom. Man, I really wanted him to do an album with Tyler the Creator. What is the most overrated thing in life? Rating things. Being popular in high school. Idolizing celebrities and taking their views seriously. The gravity of how other people's thoughts and opinions affect each other's lives. The idea that you'll arrive at some point in your life where things will be easy. It never happens. You never arrive anywhere. If you're lucky, you'll get better at dealing with your own mess of problems, but it won't necessarily be easier. Reproducing. Yeah, I mean, everybody's doing it, but it's so boring. Fashion industry. It's all overpriced garbage. Honestly? For me, it's concerts. Never meet your heroes, music edition. Life. Life is overrated. Just a series of bullshit and bills to pay. Fondue. I think I've had fondue once in my life and it tasted so gross. I don't know what it was. Based on your personality, if you were an animal, what would you be? Do keep in mind, this is how we pick your fursonas forever. Sloth. Good luck getting anywhere, bozo. My mom says a jack. Well, your mom sounds mean. A cougar. You win. Yeah, I mean, fair enough choice. A dog. But like a year old puppy that just learned how to hump things and cause trouble because of my general energy and playfulness. Did you really need to add the humping thing in there? Toad. Lowly, not self-important, or all that great to look at in the scheme of things. And yet we are folks who just the right sort of person is really happy to encounter. We are who we are and have a quirky following. Pig. Smarter than most people realize and will eat almost anything. A squirrel. Let me guess, you've been told you have ADHD a lot, huh? Chihuahua. I guess I see it. Little ball of anxiety. Polar bear. I can socialize, but cope well with solitude, and my aim for a happy life is to eat, play, sleep, and repeat. Quokka. My smiles generally mean nothing. I think I said that name right? I have no clue. A bird, so I can fly. No, I think you don't understand the question. It was, like, based on personality. Uh, whatever. What would you do if a zombie apocalypse broke out? Kill zombies. Seriously, if people in zombie movies just stopped trying to screw each other over because it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, for a few hours, they could just cull the damn zombies. FFS, they're unarmed, dumb bipeds. Why the F are you trying to go after the smarter armed people when you can just let loose on zombies? Head to a QAnon rally. Zombies would never look there. Oh, you see, get it, because no brains. I get it. No change from any other day at the office, really. Go have a pint. This is a Shaun of the Dead joke, right? I only say that because only British people say pint. Lecture people on how a zombie apocalypse is scientifically impossible. Would you lecture people or zombies? Probably scrolling through Reddit. Okay, but if a zombie apocalypse did happen, the internet would be gone. We would no longer have, like, the sufficient infrastructure. I cried at summer camp as a little kid. No way I would survive a zombie apocalypse. Nothing. It is pretty clear from reading an average comment thread anywhere they would starve to death. Become zomb. Eh, fair enough. Go camping. I mean, you can try, but zombies do tend to wander. Students of Reddit, how have gotten expelled? Why did you get expelled? Okay, clearly you were expelled because that grammar is awful. Not me, but this kid got expelled for giving another kid purple nurples so hard they tore a part of the nipple off. Oh my god, they need to learn to chill out a little bit. My classmate 
Snake got expelled because he threw a rock at a window. The glass shattered and injured a very unlucky teacher for lightly slapping the teacher in the face for skipping the sex scene in Team America World Police. I mean, like, it's still a little crazy to slap a teacher, though. A chick in my school got expelled for punching me in the balls. I got put in the hospital. She got put on the street. Not me, but one of my classmates peed in a girl's water bottle and she drank it. The boy got expelled. I think that's pretty fair. Someone in my school got tripped because of someone's backpack. Nothing really happened, but the backpack owner was kicked out because of this. That seems a little extreme. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. My name has been Brandon again, and I will talk to you another day. Bye-bye!